Hi, welcome everybody to The Inner Typewriter, the show with typewriters, coffee, and conversations about how to make our writing better. I'm Scott Calhoun. With me today as my guest is A.T. Lin. She is a guest lecturer, and she's actually uh, hosted many of our uh, Ask the Experts series at, here at uh, CMCM. So welcome, A.T. Thank you, Scott. It's a delight to be here. And uh, so today we're talking about screenwriting. Mm -hmm. um, so right off the bat, um, someone, maybe they've written prose before, they want to take a stab at screenwriting. What's the major difference between the two? The lovely thing about screenwriting is that it's like writing a haiku in contrast to a full-length poem or, or a full-length novel. A screenplay actually takes the essence of the story and writes the description and the action in very brief sentences. And the majority of information that's put into a screenplay is, is this. It's the dialogue. Is there an activity or something they should do beforehand to help them get into the screenwriting craft? My favorite suggestion for anybody who wants to write a screenplay is to download the script to their favorite movie. Many, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of them are available free online. You just download the PDF, print it out, and this is what format it will come in. You'll see that it's very different from a novel. It's got dialogue down the middle, descriptions in very small units, and Take that script and watch the movie. As you're watching the movie, you can go through the script and notice how it's represented there, how one line of description turns into an incredible full screen of landscape, action, visuals, activities. That's where the thrill comes from. Can, can my one sentence prompt a director, a uh, director of photography, a producer, a, and the cast and the actors to make that happen? It's very exciting. But it's also the most collaborative of all writing projects. It's just the seed when it's planted into the hands of directors and producers and actors, it blooms into something, a garden so much more fabulous. And that's why so many people watch a movie and are amazed at how much more uh, full it is than just the black and white hieroglyphics on the page. As you've done the, the guest lecturing here at CMCM for mm -hmm. screenwriting, what's another, is there another th tip that you've given to, to the aspiring screenwriters? Absolutely. One of the things I use always, and disclaimer, I'm not at all involved or employed by Pixar, but online everybody can get a copy of what's called the Pixar pitch. And it's a seven stage framework for putting your idea in a comprehensible format to begin. Because for so many people, when we think about writing, even think about writing a short story, what happens is suddenly the whole universe of that story rests on our shoulders and it just seems way too big. That's when it's time for another donut, <laughs> another cup of coffee, and another <laughs> YouTube clip of cats, because it just seems too unmanageable. The Pixar pitch is so simple, and it's what has been the basis of my talks here on screenwriting at CMCM. And it has seven components. Can I review them? Mm -hmm. It's simply the story outline, which begins with, once there was, and then that's when we tell people who the, who the prime character is. So once there was a man in a bow tie, for example. Mm -hmm. The next piece is every day. That's when we say the where and the when. Every day is the setup for what's the landscape like, what's the world like, what's the era in the life of that person like. The next one is then one day. That's the inciting incident. That's the thing that throws out of kilter that familiar world. Mm. That I call the why. So we've got the who is the person, the where and the when, and this is the why, because this is, why is this person going out of their usual track? Mm -hmm. Something has gotten in the way. Something has thrown it off. The next is, because of that, 
So the character responds. The character responds to a, a flat tire. The character responds to a hurricane. And that never works. That usually just makes it worse. Their first response. Their first response. So then we go on to, because of that first response, how to mend not just the problem, but now the bad, the bad response, the ineffective response. And then uh, that can repeat really only twice. Many of Pixar's movies, if you look at them, really only have two because of that sequences. Mm. It just fills out, it's just fleshed out. How does this person launch often onto, uh, in a lot of movies, a road trip or a, a quest mm -hmm. because they're trying to resolve that problem and along the way they come up with terribly ineffective answers and then have to resolve those. The last one is until finally. That's the culmination, that's the climax, until finally they successfully overcome that problem or they don't. Right. I and other people have added a last piece, which I call an ever since then. And that's where we see the character changed or not. Mm. And the time when a not changed character is used is in not so much film noir, I'm trying to think what is that period in the 50s and 60s where it was just dark and then got darker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But also in comedy. In comedy often the main character at the end of this whole adventure is absolutely the same person. What came to mind when I was thinking of this is The Gold Rush with Charlie Chaplin. Mm -hmm. He's exactly the same innocent character. But in dramas and in more conventional movies, the character is changed. I'm a big fan of the character being changed for the better. I, I just think I could never, and I don't think screenwriters ever compete so well with the news. The news is constantly telling us about how people are defeated in their lives by their choices. And amazingly, when someone rises to a level of high effectiveness and achievement, there's this bizarre desire to kind of want them to fail. Mm -hmm. So I think, a, I think a, a screenplay, a movie, is just a wonderful vehicle for giving people sitting there in the dark, watching this life unfold in front of them, this sense that I can do it too. Whatever the character surmounts and overcomes, to me, obviously, I just get, I mean, I guess I'm kind of morality oriented, mm -hmm. is just give the audience a sense that there's hope. And so those right. are the screenplays. It's a I small like. way to make the world a better place while you're writing. I, yes, exactly. Yeah. And it also makes me want to move toward the end of the play. If I know my character's going to be in a worse place, not have learned, fallen off the planet, leaping off the bridge, well, I don't want to go to the end of the story. I want to just set it aside and mm -hmm. wait for that to be my epitaph, maybe. So maybe for our viewers, could you sort of enumerate in a list each of those uh, items in the, in the Pixar pitch plus the one that you added? Once there was, that's your who. That's your first thing is who's it about. Second is every day, that's where and when. Where do we, when we pull the camera back from the face of our protagonist, what world is she in, what landscape, what time of day, what time of year, what, what, what season? Third one is until one day, that's our inciting incident. Something happens and it changes that familiar world. This is what do they do? What does that person do in reaction? And then this is how. How do they resolve it? That's until finally. And then the last one is ever since then. So <laughs> with the who, thumbs up. With the thumbs up. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because it's got to be positive. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so tell us about a screenplay idea that you've had and uh, that you actually went on to write. And what was that process like for you? Uh, yes. My first screenplay was based on a novel I wrote about a drama in my family. What I found is if you're going to write a screenplay about real people, it really helps to morph it a bit, especially somebody you're going to stay in relationship with. 
you might really like what, and, and you write about them, not because of the human they are, but what they represent to the story. So it's, it really can be something in the creative mental arsenal to change hair color, to change even gender. There are a lot of, lot of movies that became successful when the gender of the person was changed or the cultural background of the person. It put a, a nice twist to it. I would say one of my most exciting pieces was a short story I wrote virtually in one sitting with very little tweaks. It's a short story. I was up at the Wawona Lodge in Yosemite. Mm -hmm. And I submitted that story. I won an international short story contest with that, went to Greece for two weeks uh, at a writer's colony as the, as the award for that. And I subsequently rewrote that as a screenplay. And I submitted that to the best short screenplay competition in England and got into the third round of the, uh, screen, the, the review. My companion who works in the industry said, well, you probably didn't win because of the bear handler. They're very expensive. And I had a bear in my screenplay. So he comforted me with saying, well, it could have won, but the bear handlers are so expensive. Because that particular group actually produced, produce the, they produced the, winning, um, the winning screenplay. So should, when writers are writing, should they be worried about putting a bear in the screenplay because it, it won't get produced? Well, it's a good reason to give yourself comfort why it wasn't produced. That or that or something absolutely difficult alien or unusual. Abduct, to, alien abductions might be a little hard to, uh, a little expensive. <laughs> well, I think it might be easier to replicate an alien than it would to replicate a, a mother bear. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Um, so your idea can morph and grow and change as you're writing it, and that's okay. Well, I think it's okay and it's possible to have ideas change when we've given ourselves that outline, that outline where we know what's going to happen. We know generally if our character is going to wind up, what their geography is going to be, what their world is going to be, how it's going to be different. Then within that framework, I think it's a lot easier to relax and let changes come and go. If we don't know where we're going and we just start out on a road and start writing, it's great exercise to look around, see what happens, something pops out of the bushes and we run away from that. But that's where it begins to get so broad and so overwhelming that I think that's why scripts get abandoned in any kind of story, a novel or anything. Mm -hmm. If you don't know where you're headed, it just gets too big really fast. Right, right. So in a screenplay, you have to be thinking about it's going to be on film. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but before that, it's being read by someone, and it has yes. to impress them. Yes. So when someone's writing a screenplay, something that I realized was, oh gosh, my writing of the screenplay has to be really good. It's not just oh, I can see that this is going to be a good movie. It's got to be a good, like, fun-to-read screenplay. Yes. So yes. overcoming that challenge and how to, how to make a fun read mm -hmm. as a screenplay, um, one of the things is the opening scene, mm -hmm. like hooking people. Mm -hmm. So what would, what would your advice be about the opening scene of a screenplay? Well, I think the part that's really helpful is to see it vividly for oneself, to really settle down in and see what your character's doing. And you might actually start by just seeing, a, a writer might see her character waking up in bed. That's not terribly exciting unless this camera pulls back and you see that Godzilla's next to her. <laughs> but just staying with your character in yourself, in your own imagination, until you get close to that inciting incident, that thing that's going to change. And then just back up a little bit from it so that you have time to tell what the world is, the when and the where, and then enough to let the audience become familiar with the character can't just jump into the exciting, inciting incident unless, well, one 
um, one franchise that does it all the time is the James Bond series. Mm. Always starts with an action sequence. Always starts with James Bond doing something dramatic and just escaping death and the bad guy. Or Indiana Jones is or, another or example. Indiana Jones, exactly. And yet that's a formula that in action adventures is familiar enough, the audience will stay with it even if they, it's the first James Bond, the first uh, Indiana Jones, they really don't know the character, but the excitement is there. Again, in a drama, in the things that your audience and I and most screenwriters will be working on, the audience wants to know, why should I care about this person? Who do I, who do I even, am I invested in here? One of my favorite opening scenes is a woman in the movie Central Station. It was Brazilian, it's a Brazilian movie from the 60s, no, I guess maybe the 80s. But the character is just this very unlikable woman sitting at a desk in the Central Station of Brazil, Central Train Station, writing letters for um, um, illiterate people. She's mean, she's rude, she's nasty, but it's such an unusual and kind of odd situation that we stay with her. And then she goes home with these letters that she's promised to mail, that she's taken money for writing and money for the stamp. She goes home and she throws them away or she rips them up and she, la she reads them, she laughs at them and she rips them up. She started out unlikable, now she's really rotten. And as the movie goes on, she gets more and more rotten. So. I know I diverged from your question about the opening scene. I guess it seems as though the point is to make it something that you are fascinated as the writer in wanting to explore. Why did this person do this? Why am I so interested in this person? Right. Just today I was reading that it's really a value to know that the author likes their story. There's, a, there's kind of a thought around Hollywood, supposedly, that you just write for what other people want, you just do pot boilers, you just write formulaic things. But if you're not enjoying it, if you don't like who you're writing about, we might believe them, your research might be accurate, but we just don't like the person because you don't like the person. Yeah. So that's wow. the point, is just enjoy who you're writing about. That's great, great advice. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, with us in the conversation today is a Remington Standard, uh, which is first introduced in the 1960s. And they call it a standard because it's not meant to be lifted. It is, uh, they, they don't call it a portable uh, because it, there's no case that could possibly hold this thing. It's meant to live on your desk and stay there. And of course it is you know, 62,000 pounds, so why would you want to move it in the first place? Uh, but I'll just do a couple little types there for you. Has a great uh, keystroke action and great sound to it, um, but uh, like, like some of the heavier typewriters, don't try and lift it, you know, uh, use your knees as you're lifting it and then put it in place and forget about it. Um, but you could write a screenplay on a typewriter and what fun that would be. Absolutely. So this is the original desktop. That's the original desktop, yeah. And uh, before that, the original desktop was just a piece of paper that you were writing on on your desk. <laughs> so they've gotten a little heavier, I guess, over the years. If you have time, I have one more thought I'd like to offer. Yeah, a your, bonus feature. I would like a bonus feature. I would like to add one. Yes, indeed. I have this book on display here, How to Write a Movie in 21 Days, it's by Vicki King. And why I offer this is because this is my Bible, this little tiny paperback volume. If you can't write a screenplay at all, she insists you can write it in 21 days and you might as well give it a shot. Everybody has a little less than a month to invest in exploring the possibility and she will, she will launch you into a brand new area of writing that everybody can enjoy testing at least for 21 days. Wow, 21 days. All right, well, uh, that's, a, that's a great challenge for someone to start, and thanks for the resource. We always like to have resources for our writers. Uh, thanks for being with us today, and uh, as always, keep 
typing and uh, don't forget to follow, share, and subscribe.